This week, we'll discuss presenting information, its many different forms, and your role as a creator of information. Today, we do have many methods of presenting information available to us, including in journals, via a blog post, writing a song, making a video, or even tweeting about something. These are all viable and valuable methods of disseminating or sharing information. As you become better at synthesizing information and drawing your own conclusions, you may begin to look for new places to share or present this information, especially if it's something you're passionate about or something you want to have reach a broader audience. The libraries at UMass offer several opportunities and awards for undergraduate research and undergraduate works. This is an excellent first place to start, and you have many other opportunities beyond the campus available to you. Presenting at a conference, for example, can be an excellent idea and practice for public speaking about your research. Also remember, you are a creator of information. By synthesizing information and drawing new conclusions, you've just created a new piece of information. Your work and your voice are both important parts of the scholarly discussion, and the more voices we have, the stronger the message will be, the stronger the research will be. Even those dissenting voices help, and they are important. And don't forget, you have multiple methods for recognizing and documenting what you've learned. The KWHL chart we talked about in the first few weeks is one such example. Note that your communication style will change based on your audience. This probably seems pretty obvious, but it can be challenging to do in practice. You might be interested in delivering the same message to kindergartners and high schoolers, but how you present this message is going to be very different for each group. Understanding the community you're working with can help you present your information clearly. And of course, it does take some practice. Furthermore, there is a personal responsibility associated with sharing information, data, and knowledge. This is something that scholars work with all the time. So your professors, researchers in the field, other people interested in this research. You must recognize what you share, how long you keep it, and who you share it with. Remember that many scholars are granted funding from the government. For example, many of the faculty at UMass in the sciences receive grants from two major funding agencies, the National Science Foundation or the National Institutes of Health, the NSF or the NIH. And these funding agencies often require researchers and scholars to share the information they produce, again, the data and the publications that they produce. And increasingly, the government is looking for sharing via open access publications, meaning they want anyone, anywhere, to be able to read about this research. Short and sweet this week. I hope you've all come away with some ideas about how to present your information, that every audience demands something different from their information presentation, and you recognize that each method of presenting information has its own benefits and drawbacks. As always, happy presenting and happy searching.